Welcome everyone. Today we'll keep talking about structs, but today we'll focus about methods. What are methods in Rust? Methods are very similar to functions. They are a very similar signature, so it, it will be more about a logic difference, but they are defined in the context of a struct. So not exactly inside a struct, but they refer to a specific struct, or also a num or trait, but we'll see a nums in an upcoming lesson. They are called by this by an instance of a struct, and their first parameter should always be self, that represents the instance. We'll see an example. We had this example that has a struct here, you can see it. We have the function main, and here we create an instance of the struct. We are using a rectangle as a struct, so it's very simple, but just to have an idea. So it has two dimensions, it has width and height. And then we have this, we had an external function called area, it's basically to calculate the area, that has input as a parameter, a rectangle, and a reference to a rectangle. This ampersand, it's because we are passing a reference, we don't want ownership here. As a return value, we have a u32. We just do rectangle.width multiplied rectangle.height. How can this be improved? Because the problem here is that we have this function that might also be called, it has to be called from here or somewhere else. We would like that this calculate area is something specific for this struct. How can we do it? We can use a method. So let's refactor this. Let's do a quick refactor of this. We can comment this. Let's comment also this line. Below the struct, we have this impl block. Impl stands for implement, and it's used to define methods of a struct. Impl. And then we define the name of the struct we want to refer to. We can also have multiple structs. In this case, we have only one rectangle. And then inside this, let's do exactly what we did before. Let's have a function called area. It's basically to calculate the area that has this signature. It has an ampersand self that refers to the instance of this, the, the rectangle that we have uh, in input here. And then we have u32 and then we have self with multiplied self. Here the notation is a bit different, so we can print the area, but in this case we are using the method of the struct, so it's different of what it looked before. Print ln, the area of the rectangle is square pixels, check it out, we have rect1, which is this instance, dot method, and then we call the method with the parentheses. Let's try it out. And we have the expected output. But here we are using a method of the struct. It's not more like an external function that we have to call. We can remove this part. We are using this method. And here, we, as I said, as a parameter, we have this ampersand self. So as a parameter, we have in input this instance. The thing is that as all the functions, if we pass here without the ampersand, we get the ownership. But usually what we want is to have this just, let's say, in read mode. We want just to read this information because we want, for example, to have an output. It's more about organizing the code. Here we have an implementation which is about the rectangle. This is the area of the rectangle. Before it was just a generic area and we were passing a rectangle as a parameter. We can also have a method that has the same name of, the, of a field. For example, here we have as a field width and height. For example, we let's have this one, fn width. I don't want this, but I want this to be a bit different. I want this to return a boolean. For example, let's say that I want this, I want to check if the width is zero or not. Self dot width greater than zero. Here, let's print the width, something like this. We are using a method called width, but we also have a field called width. And here we have this. We print, in this case, if the width is greater than zero, we print this message, the width of the rectangle is and the value. If the width is zero, we want to print, for example, this. So for example, let's say error. If I do calgoran q we get a couple of warnings, but check this out. The width of the rectangle is 30. If instead of 30, we have zero, control L, calgoran q 
we get this message. Okay, this can be useful, but we can have mythos that have the same name. Do you know what a getter is? Have you ever heard of the word getter? I heard that the first time in Java. <laughs> in Rust, we don't have a default getters. Getter 4, 8. We can have basically a method that not only has the same name of the, of the field, but it just returns the field. Why? We will see this better in some upcoming lessons, but in short, we want a field that is private. This by default is not accessible. We are not using the public um, keyword yet, but we want this, for example, to be accessible and readable by the outside. So for example, let's, let's print it here. Okay, Ctrl L, Calgoran dash Q, and we can print here the height of the rectangle, which is 50. I think the method can be very, very useful when we have uh, complicated code and we want to organize it in an efficient way. We checked the basics of methods. We can also have methods that has multiple parameters and not just this self. For example, let's say that we want to check if a rectangle can fit another rectangle. This will have an input the self instance of the rectangle and also another instance. So it, so it will have an input two instances of, of another one. I like this code. Let's read it. fn can hold. This is the function. We have, you see, we have two parameters here. One is the instance itself and the other one is another instance, which is a reference to another rectangle. This is like a rect2. We have a bool, so it can fit or not. This is the basic example. So if the width of the first rectangle, this self, the first one, is greater than the other one, and the height is greater than the other height, this will return true. This code can be improved. Also, with the help of GitHub Copilot, we can have an OR operator, because also if the width is greater than the height and the height is greater than the width, we can just you know turn the rectangle by 90 degrees and let's say that we can fit it. Let's make this example. Second rectangle, a third rectangle, and then we can see can rect1 hold rect2 with a print statement, can rect3 hold rect2, like cargo round dash q, and we have false for the first one and true for the second one. This was an example of how you can use uh, uh, multiple parameters in a method. Now something very interesting, which are associated functions. You see, I'm using this uh, single impl block. Here I want to define associated functions. What is an associated function? Is uh, this function that has, that has not this self uh, as uh, the first uh, parameter. We already used an associated function multiple times in this uh, series, but we never went into the details. Uh, sometimes we used this uh, double colon, which is not a syntax that uh, I'm uh, a huge fan. This is how we can use it, but how we can we define it. For example, associated function to define a square. Usually an associated function is to create a specific instance of this struct, but it, that has something a bit different. For example, we can have this one. The syntax is very similar. So fn, we can call this square. I don't want to return a rectangle because I like this syntax more. Self and self. This is very elegant. So we have this one and now we want to use it. How can we use it? We can use it like this. I just wanted to remove everything that we are not using. So like this. Let's create a square. You see the syntax. It's, we are using this one. Let square equal rectangle double colon square. We are using this. You remember when we were, we were using strings, like string, we were using an associated function, but we still didn't know. I think this syntax is a bit weird, but it's okay. <laughs> now, we have this, but can we, for example, calculate the area of this uh, uh, square, or is it like a, another struct? Calculate the area of the square. Will this work? It works. The area of the square is 100. So we have effectively a rectangle. We created this instance of this rectangle using this associated function. And for example, the great advantage here is that we passed just a single value. And the logic to create a square 
using one single value is here inside here. And do you agree that a square is a rectangle? <laughs> Some people get mad when they hear this, but you do you agree? A square is a rectangle. Last thing that I want to uh, tell you today, and then we will be done, is that here we wrote all this implementation, this impl block, in a single block. Can I have multiple blocks with the same struct? Can I have here impl rectangle and something else? And let's say, for example, that this square, I want this to be here, like this. I'm trying to have two blocks, two implementation blocks of the same struct here and here. And for example, I added the logic of the square here. It works. So I can have multiple implementation blocks. This is just to organizing the code in a better way. This concludes our, let's say, mini series about structs. So we saw structs, we, we introduced structs in the data types lesson. Then we made a specific lesson about structs. Then we did an example of structs. And then this was the lesson about methods. Methods are functions that are just used in the context of a specific struct. We will keep using structs for sure, but this is the end of this lesson.